Phosphate rock is formed in oceans in the form of calcium phosphate called phosphorite. It is deposited in extensive layers that cover thousands of square miles. Originally, the element phosphorus is dissolved from rocks. Some of this phosphorus goes into the soil where plants absorb it, some is carried by streams to the ocean. Large deposits of phosphate from igneous rock are found in Canada, Russia, and South Africa. Deep sea exploration of the world's oceans have revealed that there are large deposits of phosphates on the continental shelves and on the seamounts in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Recovering these deposits, however, is still too expensive, so for now they remain untouched. Phosphate helps with the growth of crops through photosynthesis and cell division. It also forms fat and albumin and helps with growth and reproduction. The amount of phosphate in the soil determines the mineral content in the plants and produce. <laughs> The more water-soluble phosphate in the soil, the more mineral content. The majority of phosphate in fertilizers is treated rock phosphate. When phosphate gets into the soil, it goes through a process of forming minerals that are good for crops. Hey, isn't that the Environmental Minister of Affairs? Oh! Minister! 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 What can you tell us about phosphate and rock? Fertilizer is a very controversial is issue. People are worried about the health hazards and different things, but the reality is that phosphate, potassium, and nitrate are needed for vegetable fertilizer and at home gardens and large scale. If copper is terminated, then it only introduces more diseases and more sicknesses to the organisms of the earth, and it, it'll kill a bunch of organisms anyway. It's really counterproductive. Hi, I'm on site here today with Joe Simpson, a construction worker here on the site. Could you please explain to us, Joe, the importance of copper in wiring? Well, copper is a very highly conductive metal. Uh, it conducts electricity very well. It's also very ductile, which means it can be easily strung into wires. And can you also explain to us the importance of copper consumption in the electrical industry? Well, the electrical industry uh, consumes 42% of all copper, and that's the highest of any category that uses it. All right, thanks. And now for a little bit more information about copper. Copper mining takes place in very large open pits. To obtain the copper, explosives are placed in rocks to loosen them and obtain the copper. It can take over three tons of rock to get one ton of copper. More than 95% of all copper has been extracted since the 1900s. Crude oil is formed deep under the Earth's surface from organic material. When plant and marine life die, the remains become part of the sedimentary rock at the base of the ocean. Layers of this organic material and sediment pile upon each other over millions of years, increasing heat and pressure to turn the material into petroleum. The process repeats and the petroleum turns into crude oil. Humankind has discovered a way to extract and use this oil for many things today. Houses, automobiles, etc. greatly depend on this non-renewable resource. The environment suffers a great deal when oil is not properly used and transported. Oil pollution is a big problem in population-dense areas, and dumping is another in rural areas. The most detrimental effect to the environment is when oil tankers spill out millions of gallons of oil into the oceans. In 1989, a tanker named the Exxon Valdez leaked approximately 82 million gallons of oil along the Arctic coast in Prince William Sound, Alaska. Plenty of marine and avian life was completely wiped out, and dozens of species are to this day still recovering. Measures to ensure this kind of thing doesn't happen are readily available and affordable. But countless ships continue to leak into the seas each decade. Unfortunately, the results are always the same. Today's North American culture greatly depends on oil. It seems that we cannot go without somehow using fossil fuel. But at what price do we enjoy this leisure? Our economy greatly depends on oil to thrive. Therefore, advances in more environmentally friendly sources of energy are often overlooked and underfunded. Those in power avoid looking to the future and only focus on what can make them money right now. We continue to spend more and more on gasoline at the pump because unfortunately, we don't really have a choice. 
However, the biggest strain oil has on our society is the lives that are lost over it. War rages on every day over control of oil fields in the Middle East. Countless human lives are lost, yet we seem to have a blurred vision. The media bombards us with propaganda and images of just a battle, but there is no justice for the lives lost. Some politicians are starting to realize this and stand up for what is right. Ladies and gentlemen, if elected president, I will adopt an energy policy plan that will eliminate our dependency on oil from the Middle East. We will be able to independently supply ourselves with the oil we need to sustain our economy and country. No more will we ever have to send our young men and women of America into conflict in the Middle East. The time is now to realize that life is too precious to be wasted on such trivial matters. Yes, we depend on oil now, but in 50 years, we may not be able to. So the time is now to make a change. Thank you. People don't realize how valuable and important these non-renewable natural resources are. If we do not start becoming more responsible in our consumption of these non-renewable natural resources, we will not survive.